tax place of revenue is to be put into a dedicated lockbox account. Money of the Thrones. Like Social Security. Yeah. Just like Social Security. Yeah. <laughs> Early Thrones before. What it comes down to is this. It's the only way we could even attempt to guarantee that this money will be segregated in the general fund. If you go back and look at the sales tax for a second, the sales tax was enacted in 1953, when Governor Fine was the governor, for the express purpose of funding school, 1% of the time. It too would have been put into a lockbox account, eventually it made it into the general fund. Better than 99% of sales tax revenue now goes to funding public education, even though it's, even though it's intermingled with general fund revenues. Same thing happens here. The bill guarantees that all school districts will be at least level funded year over year. So even if the lockbox account gets raided, the money's going to have to come from somewhere. So it would behoove the legislature to not raid, to not raid that account. Second part of that is, any fund balance that accrues should not exceed 6% of the total property tax replacement funding. Uh, I'm not an accountant, but I understand that's a reasonable number and that's what's written in the bill. If at any time the revenues exceed 6% of what is necessary, it triggers an automatic reduction in the income tax. Now, how's the money going out to the schools? All districts initially will be fully funded, dollar for dollar, for what they lose in the property tax. This is another argument we hear all the time. Oh, they're going to take all the money from my district and they're going to send it to Philadelphia. No. Whatever your school district loses will be, re will be reimbursed dollar for dollar from the state. That doesn't change. Annual increases will be based on the increase in the CPI. The CPI is a consumer price index. It's a measure of inflation. Based on the CPI or available revenue, whichever is less. So if the CPI increases by 2% in a given year, each school district gets a 2% increase in its funding from the state. The 1991 funding formula, legislators in the front row, it's a mess, isn't it? it I mean, what, this thick or something? This has no silly funding formula. It's percentage-based, every school district gets the same, period. Now, supplemental school funding. You've got to be realistic. You can't leave the school districts twisting in the wind. They are going to have legitimate needs. Increasing population, they need a new school, a school needs major repairs, a new roof, or they decide they want a new natatorium, they need a swimming pool. They have the option of levying a local earned income tax, but by voter referendum only. For once, you're going to get to make the decision on whether or not taxes are going to be increased. Instead of the school boards doing it unilaterally. In the referendum, if it's, if it's for a special project, the referendum has to state the name of the project, the total cost, the property tax to be imposed, and a sunset date for the tax. Meaning you know when that tax is going to go away. If the school board can make their case to you, and you approve it, fine, they get their tax. If you don't approve it, no, it doesn't happen. They can also use it for ongoing expenses if they wish. But it is again by referendum, and that referendum has to be refreshed every four years. Once it's approved, you can't keep it going forever. Legislation is to be implemented for replacement of the school district taxes only, property taxes only, not to be integrated in any way with the basic education subsidy. That's left to the General Assembly to determine. In previous versions of the bill, it called for rolling all the money together into one big pot, both the BES and the property taxes, and drive it out to the schools. We know that people meddle with the way the BES is driven out. We know what happens. Certain school districts are favored over others. Said, so, okay, that's the way it is. Let's let the executive branch, legislative branch, whoever, play in that sandbox. Do what you want to do with the basic education subsidy, although it's got to be fixed. Let them do what they want to do, keep it simple, replace the property taxes only. That's the end of it. <coughs> An introduction of separate concurrent legislation for a constitutional amendment to forever abolish property taxes and its school funding. <laughs> When I mentioned about the expansion of sales tax pays, you should have expanded on that because I overran my notes. But let me give you an example of how this affects you. People have said to me, oh, we shouldn't tax flags, we shouldn't tax clothing, we shouldn't tax food, we shouldn't tax legal services, there's so many things we shouldn't tax. 
I'll give you some simple math. Take your school property tax, divide by 0.07. That's the amount of the new income tax rate. That will give you how much you have to spend on newly taxed items and services to equal the amount of school property tax eliminated. For every $1,000 of school property tax eliminated, you would have, have to spend $14,825 on newly taxed items and services. The average school property tax bill in Pennsylvania is $3,500 a year. If your school tax bill was $3,500, you would have to spend $50,000 on newly taxed items and services to equal the amount of property tax eliminated. Considering that, does it really matter what is subject to the sales tax? Yes. Okay, who said that? I did. Okay, go ahead. All right. Number one, caskets and burial vaults. Yep, That's so what? Bad debts. Some people have enough problems, let alone you're going to tax bad debts. Stop for a second. You said right. caskets and burial vaults. Yes. Okay. I'm 65 years old. With any time luck, I've got 15 more years to live. I will gladly take 15 more years of no property taxes and have my have my estate pay the pay the sales tax. That's on your company. Yeah, we look at the, we look at these emotional appeals. The emotional appeals don't mean anything. We look at the math. If the math works, why not? When, just, me, when, you, when you can say under services, when you can want to trans, uh, tax transportation, everything is taxed. Everything going into stores. Transportation is taxed. Did you hear this? Transportation is not taxed. Trans well, on this thing it is. I don't know where you got that thing. Transportation but, services. No. That, you're talk that's talking about trucking services, not talking about Well, everything is transported by truck or bus or whatever. Okay, again. Everything, everything is going to be taxed then. What's the difference? It's a big difference. No, it's not a big difference. Are you Every, everything you go in a grocery store and buy is going to be this. Going to be, yep. The price is going to go up because of transportation. That's the reason right now, right now why they have the prices are so high in the stores. Okay, I don't, want, I don't want to get into some of the gas prices. The question is, the gas prices are so much driving it up. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me finish, and I'll take questions. I do not want to get into a discussion. All right, that's, All I right. apologize. Uh, and that's okay. I'm just saying there are, there are instinctive objections out there. You've got to look at the math instead of working on instinct. And that's what it comes down to. If the math works, I don't care. I'll pay tax on the food. Get rid of my $4,000. Okay, I'm going We've also had, a, uh, had arguments about the property tax from those saying that it's the most stable form of taxation. I guess in a way it is, because when someone's holding a gun to your head, you're going to do what they want you to do. In this case, the gun is your house. And if they're going to take it from you, you're going to find a way. You're going to do it without food, you're going to do it without clothing, you're going to do it without your medicine, so you can pay your property tax. <laughs> it's not true. And I'll tell you why. Exton Mall, Chester School District, $180,000 loss in their budget in the past year because the, because the mall appealed their property tax assessment. Why I'm missing in Berks County, Highlands, a nursing home appeal, $250,000 loss to the Wilson School District. Upper Marion in, in Monroe County, uh, not Monroe County, excuse me, Montgomery County, Blackso Smith Clyde has a huge facility there. They appeal. In 2008, it was granted in 2010, the appeal was granted $2 million loss to the Upper Marion School District. What made it worse? Because the appeal was in process for two years, the school district had to rebate $4 million to GlaxoSmithKline because they filed in 2008. Sunoco, Marcus Hope Refinery closed down millions of dollars in loss in property tax revenue in Del uh, Delaware County. And I got a, a letter from uh, a school, school district finance manager, manager in Montgomery County. He said in the past year, just from citizen initiated, not business, citizen-initiated property tax appeals, $94 million loss in assessed value, $1.9 million loss to their school district. Every time this happens, you make it up. In higher property taxes for those who have appealed and received less. Bill had been better, oh, we've heard this, we've heard this argument too, that the numbers don't add up. As this bill was being crafted, it was vetted against actual and estimated revenue and expenditure figures. They were supplied by the House Appropriations Committee 
and by the governor's 2012-2013 budget vote. We know to a certainty that the numbers work as written. Not that it matters, because right now, both the House Appropriations Committee and the Independent Fiscal Office are doing a study of the bill. Those, those reports are due by September 24th. We will know for certain whether the numbers add up, but I'm telling you, they do. Besides that, if they're off by a few million, you adjust the income tax to make it work. I think it's a specious argument that's being made by opponents of the bill. I mentioned that they are undergoing a fiscal analysis by both the House Appropriations Committee and the IFO. This is, more than anything else, a clean bill. It's legislation without a Harrisburg that has benefits in it for someone. Someone. One of the lawmakers, a special interest. Someone gets their hooks into the bill somewhere. In fact, there are exemptions to the expanded sales tax base that are in there because of special interests who said they didn't want their product taxed. This bill is a clean bill. There's nothing in there that won't benefit either the taxpayers or the students of Pennsylvania because we were involved with it from the get-go. <clears throat> hey, I mentioned the numbers don't work. Loss of local control. I just love that argument that this is going to be, this, <coughs> school districts are going to lose local control. The only control they're losing is the ability to tax you out of your home. <laughs> spend it as they wish. I gave this talk Thursday night at the Daniel Boone School District in Berks County. The chairman of the Daniel Boone School Board was there. He agrees with it 100%. He said, I don't care. Give us a budget, let us work within it, and we will concentrate on curriculum and educating our students rather than worrying about being fundraisers and having to take heat from the homeowners for raising property taxes all the time. Many school boards agree with what we're trying to do. Loss of local control, Jim Rodkey from our Lebanon County Group, Hold that up, please, Jim. That are the, that's what about half of the regulations <coughs> governing school districts. Yeah, it's Act 22 of the Pennsylvania Code, and all this is is the first section concerning public education. There's nothing in here about pensions. Nothing in this about um, no child left behind. This is just standards and applications, which is rules and regulations school boards must abide by. It's over 800 pages, and it is double-sided printing. <laughs> this is single-sided printing. It's be twice as wide. So where's the local control? Can they hold the questions on the end? I just wanted to ask Mr. Rodkey, what date did that first come out, Mr. Rodkey? 2000, and this, this is actually, portions of this that are printed is 2003, but this was just printed. I just printed this on Thursday. This is what's available from the website, and the dates on the bottom of it state that it was put together in 2003 by a non-elected body. So the Board of Education puts this together. The Department of Education puts this together. So where, where's the argument about local control? Shouldn't tax clothing, books, flags, look. If everybody who complained about the expansion of the sales tax base got the exemption they wanted, there wouldn't be anything left to expand to. <laughs> You've got to make a decision. Do you want to get this done or don't you? If you don't want to get it done, then fine. Don't tax clothing or books or flags or burial vaults. Don't tax it. Live with the property tax and watch Pennsylvania's economy go down the toilet. And the plan shouldn't be late. I'd eliminate the businesses, and I think I made a good argument for that. So, this is my close. Ten reasons to eliminate the school property tax. First of all, achieve true home ownership. You never really own your home as long as it can be taken from you for, for not paying your property tax. Stabilize school funding. I already talked about that. The bill guarantees at least level funding year over year and keep pace with inflation without exceeding it. It's a very stable funding source compared to what is currently happening with the property tax. Help prevent foreclosures. How many times have I heard the argument when I say, you know, it's going to help people who are close to foreclosure by getting rid of that monthly property tax escrow, and I've heard, oh well, they overspent, they bought too much house. Okay, maybe that's true. But every time a home is foreclosed, it hurts the economy. Getting rid of the monthly property tax escrow can help save homes from foreclosure 
that are being taken right now. Restore plummeting real estate values. There's a very good piece by Mr. Randall Doty on the PTCC website. If you go to the website afterwards, I'll give you the web address. Take a look at the right-hand column. It explains how every time your property taxes go up, the equity in your house goes down. High property taxes are an impediment to home sales and kills home values. Your neighbors right next door in Monroe County have a huge problem because of this. The average selling price for a house in Pennsylvania today is $200,000. If you lived in Monroe County and owned a $200,000 house, you'd be paying $10,000 a year in property taxes. They can't sell, they can't give away homes in Monroe County because of the tax burden. Worse, people are walking away from their houses because they can't afford it. They have 3,000 empty properties right now in Monroe County that are not generating tax revenue. This restores real estate values by getting rid of that property tax. Who's the sagging housing market? I saw an interesting statistic. It was funny, I was in a real estate office and I just read one of their magazines while I was waiting. And it struck me, it was in the magazine, the TV bank did a survey back in April. Found that 84%, that's a pretty high percentage, 84% of renters between the ages of 18 and 34 want to be able to buy a house. Think about that. We saw it with our own son. He and his wife were looking to buy a house to get out of an apartment, modest place, Reasonable mortgage, then they were told, oh wait, $500 property tax, that's for all. Killed the deal. They eventually worked it out, they bought the house. But the point is, without that monthly property tax escrow, how much easier would it be for a young person to buy a new home? If you were looking to step up to a bigger home, or a nicer home, how much easier would it be for you to afford that mortgage? Any realtors here tonight? What would happen if the, if, the, if the property tax escrow went away? It would be a lot easier to sell homes in the city of Wilkes-Barre. Right now, we can't give them away. I have nine listings that are stagnant, over 200 days on the market. And I'm telling my homeowners, the only way to get rid of this home is to continuously drop the price. And even that's having no effect. Get rid of the monthly property tax escrow would make it a whole lot easier, wouldn't it? I, I think, yes. I, I think easily these houses would sell. I mean, that's the biggest thing. When people are looking at purchasing a $50,000 house and paying $2,000 a year in taxes, that's killing it. Bet. And we do that the real result of the state. The housing market in Pennsylvania would explode, and so would Pennsylvania's economy would. You also lower the unemployment rate by half of what it is now. Excuse me, I can't see you. Give me a hand, please. Who said that? Yes, sir. Say it again, please. It would lower the unemployment rate by half of what it is now. You put half of those people back to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Help attract business. Help attract business. Let's change the slide. Help attract business to Pennsylvania. We already talked about that. Businesses like to, like to locate in states where the tax burden is low. Get rid of that property tax and watch businesses come to Pennsylvania because that, for small businesses,